much for being here. You're being bad right now. It's like the perfect weather for it. Thank you for being here, really. Um, we're going to talk about microfinance. So, welcome to our talk, Money Conquer Microfinance. Uh, my name is Robert Ortega. I am a principal engineer at C SPIN. I've been there for uh, almost a year. Uh, before that, I was a leading instructor at Gallup, as we know. People here, and they I learned a lot of stuff, I taught a lot of stuff, and that's what I like to do. Um, and that's how I met this guy. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett, and I am our UI architect at C SPAN. I have been specializing in the front end development for the past three years, and over the course of that time, I've had the absolute honor of working on a great range of products across a number of industries. I built everything from maps at MapQuest to beer keg management systems. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Um, as well as tools for research scientists at uh, Merck Pharmaceuticals. So, I guess you could say I really love to pack a lot of functionality into front end applications. Uh, we work together at a company called C SPAN, and C SPAN is a container ship company. What we do there is we build tools for the business that allows them to better manage a fleet of container ships around the world. Everything from understanding, leveraging machine learning to understand how much our ships going to be worth in the future, to what is the best trade route for a ship to take. Our current tech stack is AWS for our cloud infrastructure, GoLang for a lot of our backend services, and React on the front end. Of course, we're also leveraging Microfinance. So let's get into it. Um, so this talk is for people who like to learn more about architecting your front end, right? You've heard about microfinance, what is it? Things like that. So uh, this, this is what I hope for you to get out of here. So by the end, I uh, hope you'll be able to like, describe what microfinance are. So we're going to spend some time just like introducing it and everything. Uh, so you should be able to just give a sentence of what they are. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, common integration, so you should be able to list what some common integrations of doing this, like how do you do microfinance? And lastly, uh, we want to highlight, like, what is the problem? Like, why would you do microfinance? Uh, that's sort of what, uh, another big point I want to do. Oh, sorry, Ryan, no more. All right, uh, sweet, so let's do it. Uh, those are the goals, and this is how we're going to do it. Great. So on the agenda today, we're going to first introduce what is a micro front end, then we're going to talk about how we build them, then we're going to talk about why we chose them for our team, and then fourth, we're going to show you all our unique approach to building these micro front ends. And finally, we want to share some of, some of the things we've learned based on our experience with you all today. So hopefully you can go out there and maybe make some more informed decisions about your um, architecture decisions in the future. Cool. All right, show of hands. Who is familiar with micro front ends? Nice. Very cool. All right. And so for everyone else who's maybe not as familiar, what is a micro front end? A micro front end is a single UI composed of standalone applications. And so when we say single UI, what we mean is a singular experience. It provides a single view into the business. The user should not know the difference between the micro apps that make up the micro front end. And in turn, the micro apps should work together to support a single user session. And they usually have a single overarching style for ease of use. When we say standalone, we mean that these micro apps are built to run by themselves, completely independent. They are independent code bases maintained by different teams. They are deployed independently to different locations. For example, if I had a static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript micro application, I could host that on S3. But if I had a server side rendered micro application, we could containerize that and put that on EC2. Another term that you might have heard uh, micro is called are composite UIs, but out there in the industry, I really hear these things referred to as micro front ends. So we'll go with uh, we'll go with that term for this talk. All right. So now that we know a little bit about the theory behind micro front ends, let's talk about the practice and what they actually look like. We're going to use application diagrams to kind of illustrate 
what's out there and how microfinance compare to what's what we see out there. So in my experience as a web developer, I have come across a fair amount of systems that seem to be some sort of take on the three-tier architecture. This three-tier architecture is characterized by horizontal decoupling between the data, the API, and the view layers. So these things are independent. Some of the more modern takes on this three-tier architecture also have a little bit of vertical decoupling in the backend services along logical business domains. However, even with this more modern approach, we still have a problem. And that problem is a monolith UI. So we're here to talk today, how do we break apart this monolith UI? Well, the answer is, we extend the design principles of microservices to the UI layer. So this is a depiction of what that looks like. And as you can see, we have introduced a third UI layer here, which we refer to as micro applications. So a micro front end is made of micro applications as well as the layer that integrates them all. In this example, we're using the browser. The browser is the thing that aggregates these three discrete uh, micro applications. At the end of the day, the whole point of doing this is to enable domain driven design. It is great for businesses and it's, it's great for teams, and it gets a solid approach. So, okay. What I'm understanding is we've had like in, in the industry you've seen like this uh, and just go back to slip okay, you see this pattern of like microservice in the back end. So why has it taken so long for the front end to adopt this? <laughs> <laughs> well that question very yeah. tough. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it seems like logical that we would should have been doing this a long time ago. So why why haven't we been doing this? Why why is the industry just kind of coming around to this design pattern? Well, we have found out that it's a big problem. And what we mean by that is a micro front end is not something that a single developer could build themselves in the spring. Oftentimes an undertaking like this requires the coordination and cross-coordination of many teams within the business as well as buying from the business itself. Another reason why we don't see this as much as we think we might is it's just not necessary. A lot of applications don't have a UI layer big enough to warrant uh, splitting apart or team size big enough to warrant breaking those team sizes uh, into smaller teams. And so for these reasons, we've actually heard microfinance referred to as the last mile problem. And in this example, the last mile refers to the complexity of getting goods to a, a point. Um, and it's, it's really easy, like in telecom, for example, to run a ton of wires across the United States, but it's hard to then transmit that into a receiver, that, that last mile problem. So uh, how do we how do we build systems that overcome the, the difficulty of getting all of our information to the user? And what happens when we find ourselves in the position where we have to break apart our UI code base, either because our code base is way too big, we have scaling problems, um, we, we just we realize that, man, we got to like really figure this out. So uh, that leads us to how are microfinance even built? The, the really cool thing about microfinance is that there's so many ways to build it. And it's, it's also one of the more practical aspects of microfinance. And because there's so many ways to build micro front ends, this problem highlights the flexibility of the web. We have so many tools and technologies available to, to us as web developers, and micro front ends leverage a lot of them. The, the usage of these, of these technologies in new and interesting ways also opens up fields of research that I have never even seen before in the front end space. Whatever your approach to building a micro front end is, 
every single approach to building a micro front end must solve the problem of integrating its micro applications. Spoiler, spoiler alert, <laughs> there's no best way to do this. It happens that it's all about uh, making trade-offs that are good for you and your team and the constraints uh, under which you are operating. So with that in mind, we're going to take a look at some of the popular approaches that microfinance frameworks are taking towards integrating their independent micro-applications into a single cohesive view. So, the, the three categories that we have kind of bundled everything up into are build time integration, server side integration, and browser integration. We'll go through these real quick. Uh, build time integration is where the micro front end treats its micro applications like dependencies and then includes them in the parent project at build time. So, what this looks like in a, a node project, for example, is uh, here in our package JSON, we would literally just be uh, importing our micro applications as dependencies. The second approach that we see is server side integration. And server side integration can include techniques ranging from server side in includes to server templating to Nginx reverse proxies. And this approach is really about leveraging the server to be responsible for collecting all of the assets needed for a given view and then rendering that to the browser. So if we go back to our technical diagram, you can see we have added a server integration right here in between our backend services and the browser. <laughs> the third and probably most common approach that we see is browser runtime integration. The, um, and this places a responsibility of assembling our, our views on the browser. And so some of the techniques that we see um, being used are iframes, web components, and raw JavaScript to go out and fetch the assets needed to assemble a view within the browser. And this is uh, a diagram of what that looks like. Oftentimes, with the browser integration, we will see the notion of a application container, which is sometimes called the bootstrap layer. And what happens there is the server will send down a very minimal bootstrap layer that will then uh, go out and, and fetch all of the different assets that it thinks the user needs at a given point in time. It can also do things like <coughs> information about a user's device or a user's um, browser, and we can tailor our response depending on um, the needs of a machine. Awesome. You guys ready for some code? Yeah. Actually, yeah. I do want to highlight one point before that. <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to the demo application and all that stuff. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is uh, why we adopted them. So, uh, for your team, if you're considering, like, oh, man, my friends, that'd be cool to do, uh, I really want to highlight um, why we did this and why, um, why Michael Franz, we thought was a as a good solution that fits our business requirements and our developer needs. Um, and this is key, I think, to understanding my performance, because uh, uh, without really understanding the problem, uh, it doesn't really make sense. And uh, there's a tweet by Dan Gittermoff from the Yeah, he, uh, he said, like, I don't understand my performance. This was back in May. And uh, I don't think he understood the problem. <laughs> like, how are you going to understand my performance if you understand what it's trying to address? So I want to give credit to, to this guy, Luca Mitzer, uh, that guy. <laughs> he, uh, he responded to the tweet, and uh, I really like to focus on the context. And uh, the context is so important when you're thinking, uh, say, for your, for your company, and you're trying to provide solutions. Without context, a solution might just be terrible or wrong. Like, you might think, like, why, why would you ever do that? But with context, it might be like the best solution, the right thing to do. Um, so I thought that was a great answer by him, and he's done a lot of work in the micro front end, so I would check him out. He's written a lot of articles. Um, it's great, so thank you, Luca. Uh, so what are our business requirements at C-SPAN, uh, and why did we choose to do micro front ends? Well, uh, to give a little background, C-SPAN, we are, c is a large corporation, huge. Uh, we're like a small dev team for them, and we're trying to build an application to make their jobs easier. So we're trying to solve so many different problems. So 
there's a lot of domains. There's a lot of, like everybody wants a little piece of like this little startup. Like, oh yeah, uh, please do this all this stuff. So uh, to kind of step to step back, we have uh, different business domains. We have like the reporting team. We have the commercial team. We have the budget team, and we kind of think of it that way. All right. So we need to build this application. There's all these business requirements that we have. This, 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 this teams. How do we approach it? Well, first thing we do is like, okay, we have this business domain. What is there? We need to find a clear mission for them. What is it that we're trying to build to solve them? How can we help them? So starting at that point, it made sense for us to build our application that way. So now we have this sort of uh, kind of keeping with the same uh, theme, but it's like, why don't we build our application that way? So we have the reporting team, which uh, we want to help them monitor the fleet. We have the commercial team to help the help them keep the vessels uh, leased. We have the budget team to help them manage the crew budget and all that stuff. So. Now we're thinking of our application that way, and there's a lot of stuff here. Don't worry about it. I just wanted to highlight, uh, like, we have a specialized team model, or you have things. But now you can think of your team and your company more on this, like, uh, like cross-functional teams, where it's grouped more by the use case of um, the application. So we're targeting the business domains. This is why we thought, oh yes, microfinance. This is how we can architect our application this way to target this. Focus on the business domains. So, uh, another shout out I want to give just you know, just borrowed a lot of the slide like design. So, this guy is also Michael Gears, has done a lot of work with Michael Prenance. Um, this is a really good book, too, if you want to learn. Uh, one thing I didn't like is the technology he uses. It seemed outdated, it's like doing iframes and Nginx, and I don't know. Uh, a lot of startups don't use that sort of the technology, like we certainly don't. So, um, let's talk about tech. So, how does uh, like my front ends, how does it uh, meet our developer needs? Well, I uh, broke into like different sections. Uh, so for you developers out there, do you think my front ends be a good solution? Uh, we found that it helps in these areas. Uh, for migrating application, if you're having to rewrite or like build things, like you have like a current React app you want to throw it in, you could help for that. Uh, if you want to have a flexible tech stack, uh, for us, we don't really know what our tech section look like. We don't know exactly what they want from us. So, uh, and it's also helpful for building manual applications. So uh, I want to focus on those. Uh, come in, guys. There's seats. Other things to do. Yeah, just jump in. So um, let's start with the bit first one. So uh, application migration. Talk about how if you're having to rewrite your code base, which eventually you will have to do, because uh, the technology is always changing. Uh, I like this little comic, and this was us uh, when we first started at C-SPAN. Uh, we're like, oh yeah, this uh, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm just going to go back and write it. It's like, oh, let's go this way. This guy's going to the cave, like, oh, we're progressing so fast, and like, oh, what is this? And all of a sudden, they find themselves stuck in the cave, like, tap tap, and like, they're kind of drowning on like, all this bug and stuff. Uh, that was kind of us. Uh, we um, started building this application. We wanted to prove to this large company, yes, like, we can build the tools for you. We can make this happen. And we coded and we built this thing, it was awesome. We built this large application. Uh, but it got to a point where like, uh, it was pretty bad. We, um, and this is completely our fault. So, uh, we had like three seconds, like every time we say, you know, like three seconds to recompile. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, um, so we kind of said, okay, if we're gonna keep going, we need to do this right. We need to take our time, like stop this startup thing of like trying to get stuff done. So we need to rewrite it. Uh, so we thought, you know, micro, uh, like when we do this, I think microfrons can help us. Uh, and it kind of follows this uh, strangler pattern, uh, if you guys have heard of it, where uh, when you have a legacy code and you need to rewrite it or you want to bring in some more modern tech, you start out with the, uh, the legacy code and you bring in uh, kind of what you're trying to do and then slowly you bring in more and you take out more of the other stuff and then at some point you find yourself with uh, now, like the front end allows you to do this uh, so you have multiple little applications and you can bring, bring them in as you need them. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Other benefits. Uh, flexible tech stack. We, I'm still not sure exactly what we're building. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, this might be the right tool for it, this might not be. So uh, there's a lot of options out there. We kind of have the, the power to like, oh, what, what should we choose? Uh, and, in the front end, you know, if you've been around for a while, uh, even if you've been around for like a month, you already see like a lot of technology coming out, right? Like everything's just sort of like, oh, like how do we choose? Uh, and 
without this is great because you don't have to commit to something uh, fully. While you're building these little applications, you don't have to restructure your whole app, or you don't have to bring in something that affects everything, right? Um, so that's really cool. Uh, but thinking about this, uh, I know some people were like, oh god, a code base is full of different languages and tools, like, how can you keep up? Uh, some myths is that I love this one. Uh, I don't like to see for some people, but it's like what they're supposed to look like. There's like this perfect tile, and what they actually look like. It might have like patches and things like that, like everything kind of stitched together. Or this one, which is taken from one of the books. Uh, it is so complicated. There's like this application where you have one view, and there's supposed to be like this red key, the key inside is like Angular app. And you have a React app, like two little fragments here, and then you have a Vue app there. Like, can you imagine a code base just like everything's thrown in there? Is like how complicated that would be. Um, that's not necessarily the case. Like, you see a tech stack that has like multiple frontends, like React, Vue, React Elm, and the back end, you have Ruby, you have Java, you have you know Phoenix, and then like the database, like any database technology you possibly imagine, like it's there. Like, that's not the case. I want to like just like cut that there. Like, if you do imagine frontends. This, this won't happen, and I, <laughs> uh, like it, it allows for it. If you want to put in a view in a React app together, you can do it, you can bring it in, but this is uh, sort of a myth. People are like, I don't want to do that, I want like multiple. It, this, there's a lot of technical overhead uh, that way. Uh, for example, for us, we stuck with React and Go in the back end. That's pretty, pretty simple as that, but it does allow us to, uh, and some front ends like, oh, we can do like, GraphQL and Relay, that's cool. And then some, some front end we do like, no, he does, or some we do, he does, you know? And it does allow for that flexibility. So, yeah, that's a really cool thing. Uh, the last kind of like, uh, as a dev, what microphones bring to you is uh, being able to build manageable applications. And I want to take a second, I, I think I've been using this term, we'll be using it, uh, talking about micro apps. What exactly is a micro apps? Well, you have your front end application. Uh, Micro apps is a, is a concept of like the, the applications that you put together to build it. So they're also referred to as fragments or page. Um, there's this uh, little diagram again. It's kind of hard to see from back there, but I just want to talk about it. There's like the applications that you have that you built, say uh, your front end like React app or View app, and then you have a sort of integration layer that's like using that. Again, going into that, uh, and then puts them all together. So. This is what I'm talking about, like micro apps. That's what you're building. And those are the standalone applications that you built, and you put them all together later on. So uh, you might be thinking, oh, so like components. <laughs> uh, micro components are not trying to replace components. Like it's it's not the same thing. These are applications, standalone applications that you know kind of target to a business domain. They're kind of trying to solve a problem. They're not just components. Uh, and I want to Take a second, like put this plug in of growth. Uh, if you didn't know, that's sort of the theme of Develop Denver this year, like growth. And um, just taking a second when you're building or like when you're, uh, you know, in your work, uh, I try to do this. Just sort of think different from the standard way of doing things. You know, in the, in the tech in the front end, uh, component architecture has been so strong for the past like, three years. Like every front end uh, framework does component architecture. Uh, I thought it was a good opportunity. Like, you know what? Let's try it. Let's do something different. This is kind of a different approach. Uh, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for growth. And I challenge you to do something like that. It's sort of kind of following the same norm with everybody that's So, um, benefits. We saw the benefits of uh, micro frontends creating these manageable micro apps. Um, kind of the same ones that you would see for microservices. You know, you build in these applications that are smaller code bases, so faster build times, um, you have easier to test and manage. Um, they're independent deployable and you know it adds to this the risk of failure. If one fails, you still have the app. It's so much hard. So cool. That's kind of what we thought like, okay, my friends, shoot, let's do it, right? Uh, cool. <coughs> so that is why we adapted them. Um, so we've talked about what is my front end so far. It's like kind of understanding what it is, how there are multiple ways to integrate it, great, like why would you do this? So if you're at this point, you're like, oh, maybe we should do it. I don't know, that'd be cool. Maybe it will like, help our company in like, addressing all these different business domains. All right, cool. Let's uh, talk about the approach. How is it that you would build something like this? So to kind of highlight this, uh, <coughs> we build a little demo app. And uh, 
Thanks. I kind of want to go from there and see if there's a Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. We are correct. <laughs> cool. So, this little app is a very, very, very basic example um, of doing a uh, uh, the micro front end architecture. So, it has a uh, multiple front ends uh, kind of put together like that. So, you go in, and it's like, oh, cool, let's get started. So, when you go into the application, you have uh, this navigation, you have this list of vessels, and you have a map here. You're like, oh, cool. So, let's go into the map. It kind of it's not hard to see for some people, but I just kind of keep narrating. Uh, there's this red dot, so you can hover over them, and as you go over it, uh, it gives you like more information about it. Uh, it kind of highlights up here, like, oh, cool. Uh, sort of what you're looking at. You can a couple of other ones, like, oh, this is a C-SPAN, some Desi. You're like, oh, I want to know more about it. You click it, and it goes to a different page where it has more information about it. It tells you the name again, and like, the TPU size of it, all this stuff. So, very basic application. Okay. Very good. Yeah. You're telling me there's multiple applications in this view. It all looks exactly the same. <laughs> How do we even know they're different apps? You don't have to. <laughs> As a user, that's the thing. You shouldn't, right? As a user, it should be one simple, smooth flow. Uh, you don't know the multiple applications. Now, uh, I put my CSS skills to test and I sort of highlight it differently. So you might see this map is different from the other one. This is just an image. And I click here, I light it. It's just impossible to see. Uh, it's like light green, and this is green. I it, this is a view application. Up here, this map bar is a React application. So this React application, you can navigate back to dashboard. Notice how it changes the information here. And this is also part of the React app. So you have both of them integrated in. You have a view and a React all working together. And you can kind of see too that they're, uh, they communicate to each other if they have to. Uh, where like when this highlights, and it tells this one to highlight here as well. So again, focusing on like the user experience is just smooth, everything's together. Uh, the image is not how it's put together, but yeah, it's using different technologies all together. Um, let's look at kind of what's happening. So uh, to understand, okay, to understand how this is happening, I kind of want to cover a basis of how like. So it's a front end framework work. Uh, uh, if you're looking at view or React app, the way that they work in a very basic term, they take a DOM element of some sort, usually called the root, takes it and a bunch of, it runs a bunch of scripts on it and renders the application from there, right? So in order to make this work, uh, yeah, it's super tiny. I think it's a little bit bigger there, but that's no, super tiny. Uh, with this multiple applications, you can highlight, yeah, so here you can see this is one root of one application. And then you scroll down. Okay. Yeah. Cool. There's another the root. Right? So that's kind of how it's working. You have the two roots in your HTML, and you pull in all the scripts that you need, and they do their magic, you know, and then they do bad render and make it work. So uh, if you want to see, uh, just to kind of highlight it even more, uh, you can take. This, um, this application, for example, and look at it by itself. Uh, cool. So this is, I just took uh, one of the front-end applications and kind of run it by itself, what it would look like. Um, and here's a React app just by itself. You know, it kind of, it works. It works in isolation just by itself, but it's missing the big picture. <laughs> it's missing the other app. You can go to Vessel, but there's nothing there. Right? Like it's missing the view app. Uh, the user should the user should never see this. <laughs> this is an uh, application like app there. Uh, but it kind of highlights how, it, how it's uh, happening. So if you remember, uh, I like talking about ways of integrating. This is the browser integration. That's one of the most common approaches. So this is letting the browser uh, put everything together. So that's kind of a little demo. Um, just to highlight. Uh, this is supposed to show a cohesive application with diverse modern tech. Um, not so much iframes. It is a browser integration approach where you just generate this HTML that tells it where to pull everything from and then boom, generates it. And 
I try to do some simple communication between the apps, just to show like they can do it. You know, you can't communicate through the micro apps. Yeah. Hold up a second. Yeah. So we have these different applications on the same DOM. How the heck did they get there? <laughs> awesome. Yes, you are frustrated. So how do they get there? How exactly is it being put together? I cannot emphasize this enough. And if you're like, okay, cool, yeah, let's do microphone ends. Uh, please, please spend some time thinking about the orchestra. Where is this thing? Um, I, don't know, I don't know who came up with the name, but I thought it was cool. Uh, this is is the, the stitching layer. It's what uh, kind of gets all the applications and puts them all into one spot. That's a, that's a crucial thing that you have to think about if you want to do this. How is that going to work? So it was the most important part of my performance applications. Uh, we saw a diagram before. Kind of this where you have the Mac apps. We saw kind of like the dashboard running by itself. Is that the slower thing? Uh, this layer right here, probably the most important. How do you put everything together? How do you like take all these applications and back, put them in there? Uh, this is the orchestrator as it's called. Um, um, yeah, and there's we talk about there's different ways to do it. We were doing it kind of different, um, and <laughs> this is kind of like how every PR is. Yeah, <laughs> this is me, my code, and I love it. I want to see it. I want it. Um, as much as I would love to show the code the approach that we do, I think it'd be better to show like a more simplified approach to this. Um, so the app, the, the demo app, uh, super is for me. Um, the demo app does something like this. I'm just going to kind of talk about it and highlight it. Uh, all it's doing is it, it, uh, it doesn't get requests uh, to the CDNs for the mic app. So uh, in this demo, they're just hosted somewhere. Um, you can do it um, like post it in like a CDN, like AWS platform, whatever it is. Um, you post them there, so you have the application running. You get, maybe get requests for their index. Why is the index important? Well, the index has the HTML for the scripts, linked to the scripts, like all the CSS and JavaScript that they need to work. So you sort of get, hey, give me all the links, give me all the scripts, give me all the CSS. I want to know all those things. You grab them all of them, so you make a request all of them, and then you render them together. That's sort of that part right there. Uh, so how do you render them together? Jeez, this is kind of how we started. <laughs> it's as basic as that is. We just took the HTML. And we created a template like, okay, what if we just took both HTML and just put them together and like just throw it in there? Uh, and that's really um, how this application is working. Just get the list of all the links and all the uh, like uh, scripts and jam it in there. Now, yeah, big big moments. Um, but if you think about, um, I want to go back to well, I was going to go back to the HTML that we saw. It has a lot of redundant uh, like meta tags and uh, script tags. So you're just like jamming like two fully HTML like into another HTML. Like, you have like this thing. So there's ways to optimize it, of course. Once you get it working, um, yeah. How about we uh, we just generate HTML with only the assets that we need, with only the asset requests. So uh, we can have like a manifest of all the links of the of the JavaScript and then generate that way. That way we don't get all the meta tags that we don't have duplicates of all the information that we have. Another thing you can do to optimize it is if you have two React apps that you're sending, that you're putting together, uh, do you need React to be part of both of them and like bring it in? It's like, it gets very heavy. Uh, I mean, that's just a thought of like microphone and you know, a view app and a React app. Like, that's a lot of load in front of you. Uh, but if you have two React apps, then you can manage dependencies uh, so you don't have this duplicate going in there. Uh, think about your uh, applications, they, they both use the same standard library, they both don't need to pull it in at the moment that they all display together. So the orchestrator can handle that dependency. They can throw it in there, uh, and then when you build the applications, you don't build it with that dependency. It's when you throw it all together, it will happen. So that's another thing that it can do. So you're telling me that I can build my React projects without React? How, yes. does, how do you do that? Oh, I'll get there, I'll get there. Uh, it is, it is possible, it is done. Um, another thing I want to I wanna oh. get there, uh, sort of uh, before getting to that, talking about optimization, um, the orchestrator can also handle errors. What happens if you can't load one app when we can, things like that. And if you don't want to like, handle any of these things, there's tons of third-party tools out there. There's frameworks that can help you do fine microfinance. 
Uh, there's Signal Spa, there's TaylorJS, which is part of a bigger snack thing, um, and then Rassel, which is kind of what we ended up going with. Uh, uh, I don't want to spend too much time in this, but uh, for our application, we do like server-side render React, that a couple them with other applications. It's kind of tiny, but we, in the server, we build our React app, and then we send it with the micro apps that we want. Uh, yeah, and then we had it in the front end. So if you're curious about other implementations, like more complex, like please reach out to us. Um, but this is sort of uh, like a very basic, I just really want to highlight just a very basic approach. Like, it's not that bad if you want to get started. Yeah, so that's the orchestrator. Uh, micro apps. So you saw the view in the, the React app. Um, just key things to keep in mind when you're building them. Like uh, they should be independent. You cannot emphasize this enough. <laughs> you should be able to like run them locally by themselves. They should not be dependent on the other apps. Um, the layout. If you're wondering, like, hey, how did you get like everything in there? Uh, just CSS move. Honestly, like, just do CSS. Like, so when you run it by itself, uh, it should look like, like there's something missing. Right, because that's where the other things are going to go. And you do that with CSS. Um, other things to keep in mind, I found myself like dealing with a lot of changing the URL, something you don't have to think about when you just one app. And you have to think about that with uh, multiple applications. Um, communication, so you have multiple micro-apps there. You want them to talk to each other. You can do that through custom events. That's how that one was happening. Uh, you can also use the orchestrator to talk to each other. You know? There's many, many ways to approach it, but I do want to throw a disclaimer out there. Minecraft shouldn't be talking to each other that much. That kind of defeats the purpose, right? They're supposed to be independent, isolated. They're supposed to be tackling their own business domains. So if you find yourself having to do a lot of communication between them, then I don't think you're uh, wrapping your head around it the right way. Uh, but you can if you have to. You know, there's sometimes, uh, this is an example of doing custom events. Uh, I don't know if you played around with them, but uh, this is the React app. Uh, had like a little event listener for this custom event called React Wrap. And when it listened to it, it would just push it to the history. So it would change the history um, when there was an, when it, it, it listened to it. So the view app, in order to change the routing, so it was aware of like, hey, when it's changing, uh, it just creates a custom event with the information and it dispatched it. So the other one's listening. This is leveraging the fact that they're both running in the same browser. <laughs> It's uh, pretty useful. So you can do communication if you have to. Uh, it's not that bad. If you want to complicate it, you can create like an event bus if you're familiar with it. Uh, but uh, we haven't found ourselves having to do that. Uh, they're very independent that way. Optimizations. How can you optimize the micro apps? Um, in applications, you'll find there's a lot of code that you have multiple apps. Um, if they share the same logic, we found ourselves creating a lot of node modules to, uh, to share the same logic. Like, oh, they're going to be pulling the same vessel information. Cool, let's create a package for that. I created this demo app mock package uh, that allows the, both applications to pull in the vessel. So uh, you can do it that way. Um, this is addressing this point we're talking about. Uh, okay, so you have multiple React apps. Uh, Sending all of that across the wire is unnecessary. You can also, with Webpack, you can, uh, in the config, you can add externals, which tells uh, the front end application to build it without this tool. So you can build React apps without React and React DOM. Uh, just gotta make sure you inject it later, and then uh, you build like a small version of it. So like, you don't have this large application thing in front. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So you can remove shared dependencies. Uh, yeah, we have to. So that was a uh, kind of how our approach was. Uh, this is how we started. Of course, over time, we found ways to optimize it and kind of complicate it more. But just getting HTML, HTML put together, boom, let the scripts kind of render, and a lot of CSS styling, a lot of uh, uh, yeah things to keep in mind. So we're uh, kind of getting to the last part, and of course, like everything's pretty in roses. I want to highlight some difficulties that we did have. You know. As a dev, you find yourself sort of like kind of jumping through this like micro applications, kind of keeping all these things in mind. Uh, so, what were some of the difficulties of doing this? Um, code redundancy. There's a there's a lot of uh, code. You're building two applications, like you have to, like they almost share the same EMBs and like a certain kind of what they need. It's a lot more code. Uh, keep that in mind. Like uh, 
uh, building this multiple micro apps, you will have a lot of duplicate code. And as much as we try to do like NPM registry and node modules to, uh, you know, uh, kind of share the same logic so we just keep it in one place, find ourselves like, okay, cool, gotta make a change. Well, that's a node module, right? We gotta link it up and like make a change. Cool. Uh, like see how it works, right? Test it. Alright, publish it. Good. And test it again. Like make sure you didn't break any other ones that are using it and things like that. Like, it's a lot of things in mind to keep in mind. Uh, another difficulty was um, styles and scripts. You run one application by itself, like, oh, that's great, awesome, cool, let's push it. And then you didn't notice like some of the styles like will leak and like mess everything up from the other application while you put it all together. Um, it can happen with scripts too, you know. I gotta be careful like some scripts not polluting the global space. Uh, so there's things to keep in mind, as careful as you can be. Um, I like Vue that has this sort of scope. Um, uh, API that you can uh, do for your styles, so it just keeps a scope. But as much as careful as you can be, you will find yourself with some leaked styles or uh, scripts. Scripts. Um, last, uh, one of the difficulties I would say is the development flow. Uh, you're having multiple applications, so like locally, you will see this. You will see the whole picture as you're dabbing. Um, so uh, it's there's some technical overhead. Of course, it's going to look like this once it's deployed. You know, everything by itself is not the same. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, with those difficulties in mind, we, we really did kind of come to the conclusion that the, the benefits really did outweigh the drawbacks. And the biggest benefits that we've seen with micro front ends at our organization is scaling, flexibility, and agility. Scaling mainly because this micro front end system that we've built will enable our team to introduce n number of front-end applications within our technology team for our company. We not only can scale our code base, but we can also scale our, our teams and our organization around these different code bases with clear lines of responsibility, more ownership, devs spend less time trying to figure out monolithic code bases more time focusing on their problem space, and they ship features way faster as a result. They have so much more ownership, they even own their own CICD pipelines. They control how their applications are tested, how they're styled, how they're built, and we, yeah, we, we see that that's super empowering for our team. And then finally, the, uh, the flexibility that we get from this system is, is great. As Roberto was saying, it helps with rewrites because a rewrite of one micro app doesn't require a rewrite of other micro apps. And in addition to that, we can even turn around and change our whole micro front end system really easily because we have these discrete code bases. We can change the way that we want to integrate them. If it turns out that we want to do more server side integration, it's not a, it's not a hard problem. We already have all of these different different code bases that we can then draw from. That being said though, we also talked about some, some bad parts of using micro front ends. The first is when we share dependencies across our micro applications, we're creating a distributed monolith really fast. To give you an idea of what that's like, if micro app A and micro app B both share the same dependency, and that dependency gets updated, its API is different, we then have to deploy both micro app A and micro app B. That defeats the entire purpose of micro front ends. We want our teams to deploy their apps individually without requiring any other deploys from any other teams. It should be totally isolated. So sharing code can be a really slippery slope. The second drawback is these micro front end architectures, they require a lot of infrastructure. They have their own CICD pipelines, they have their, their own repos sometimes, you can do a mono repo, um, but it's, it's just a little bit more, more overhead with this approach. And then finally, as we were saying, you know, if your tech shop really does want to support Scala, Elixir, Crystal, Rust, Angular JS, all of a sudden, You've introduced a lot of complexity um, be between your teams. So th those are kind of the slippery slopes that we want to call out so that maybe, hopefully, 
uh, we can come up with better solutions as an industry. Great. So, yeah, reaching the end of our talk, um, the goal that we wanted to get at was uh, being able to describe a microphone. So hopefully you come out of here having a better sense of understanding what it is. You know, it's a building a application made of like composed of different smaller applications put together so the user can tell the difference. Um, there's multiple ways. You should be able to list multiple ways of integrating. Uh, we talked about three different ways and really focused on one. But it was uh, you can do server side. You can do uh, build time. Uh, like the packages and stuff, or you can do uh, with the browser integration. So if you let the browser do the, the flex in, that's sort of what we uh, uh, demo. The last one, let's say, you should be able to uh, sort of talk about what is the problem? Why would you do microphones? What is the problem that it's trying to tackle? Uh, and what we saw was uh, trying to address multiple business domains. And uh, if you're building one application that does that, I really think microphones is a great solution for that. So, if you have any other questions or would like to learn more about our approach, like really get into it, please, please contact us. Um, I have an email here. Uh, if you want to look at the code, it is hosted in my GitHub, which is Berto. Uh, yeah. uh, you can go to GitHub there. Uh, please reach out to Alex as well. He's very active on Twitter at Alex UI UX UI. That's me. Yeah, cool. But yeah, please reach out to us, uh, ask us any questions, anything. Thank you so much.